Hi, welcome to Live Beautifully. I'm your host, Katrina Scott, and today I am so thrilled to share that Wendy Zomner is coming over to share her journey of being an entrepreneur and a mom. She was one of the founding partners of Urban Decay, and she started a new brand called Cali Ray. She shares so much wisdom with all of us. Here we go. into my mic. I did. Damn. We'll try it again. We'll try to make it genuine and try again. <laughs> I'll probably include this. Welcome. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> thank you for coming. And Winston is also joining us. I don't know if Winston. you can see him. He might be off camera. <laughs> uh, you came up just right right up the coastline. Right up the coast. I drove right up from Newport Beach. Yeah. Lovely drive. If anyone has never met you before, I'd love for you to give like your speed date who are you and what's a day in the life for you? Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to be yeah. to cover. Um, my name's Wendy Zomner. I am one of the founding partners at Urban Decay. And I took that from a company that started in my Laguna Beach bungalow to uh, being acquired by L'Oreal. As I was telling you earlier, I'm uh, my claim to fame as a Texan is getting sent home from school for wearing too much makeup. So That's hard to do. Hard to do in Texas. And so can never have big enough hair or too much makeup. So good. Yeah. So, big hair. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I like big hair. Yeah. Yeah. I th you and I. I read this. You and I both um, grew up with hot rollers. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So many hot rollers. I would do hot rollers every day before school. Every day before school. Mm -hmm. And now I did them today. Oh, I did. I used a, I used a hot iron, <laughs> but yeah. So then I started Urban, um, kind of grew that, and really, even after the acquisition at L'Oreal, we were experiencing double-digit year-over-year growth. It really felt like I always tell the people that were my core team, which was like my my work family, which meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like we were like rock stars playing arena shows, just hit yes. after hit, like driving the beauty business. And I know that. You know, I've said this before, but when we started Urban, there was like, it was just big companies. There was no indie beauty. There was no Sephora. There was no like walk into Sephora and there's this Technicolor dream of makeup out there for you. It was like walk into a quiet department store with mm -hmm. piano music playing and there'd be some like pink, beige, makeup, maybe mauve if they were getting edgy, maybe mauve. Maybe mauve. A mauve moment. Yeah. Was there. <laughs> and, um, and that was like the beauty experience in prestige beauty. So we really decided we were going to at urban, like we were going to knock down the door of the cosmetics business, you know, we were just yeah. going to knock it down. And then Sephora arrived and then YouTube happened and then social media happened. And we were able to really take this whole thing and, and explode it. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of, the things I'm most proud of in my career are number one, I feel like I paved the way for every beauty, indie beauty, entrepreneur. Like I love that there is so much indie beauty out there and anyone can start a beauty brand now. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, um, you know, you know from being an entrepreneur too, it's like creating a space for where people come to work every day, they make great salaries, they can support their families, they can mm -hmm. buy houses and they have fulfilling jobs. Like yeah. that's huge too and, and supporting and creating, you know, being an economic engine. Mm -hmm. So all those things were really important to me. And, you know, that's, that's what I did forever. Made the naked palette, which was probably the first thing in a lot of people's makeup drawer. I was just going to say is that that was the first time I remember meeting the naked palette. I was actually checking out at Sephora. So I don't know how, like, was it, did it launch in Sephora? It launched in Sephora in 2010. Okay. okay. So I remember checking out in like the checkout you know, maze. So I don't know how early, late I was, but that's good to know that it was actually launched in Sephora. And I remember seeing it. And at that time, I felt like it was the only like bronze, gold, like speaking my language type of palette. And uh -huh. I got it and I used, what was the color? Half baked? Half baked. Half baked was my jam. Like that one went down to the metal. <laughs> it's called like hitting pan. Yeah. That's oh. what in the industry it's called hitting, hitting pan. I was hitting pan like <laughs> every two weeks because I would actually take a little bit and mix it with a lotion and put it on my body. This was before there were like body bronzers and like I was just, that was 
right on like the Decolleté. the collarbones, yeah. everything. It was so good. And then um, there was a single. Then you get, you came out with the the solo half baked. Right. And then I was like, I don't have to buy the whole palette. I think we fit. sold one like every two seconds or something. something it was probably crazy. me at least yeah. every five seconds. But you know, it's a really good story. <laughs> so that was another like collaborative work family story. Like I was mm. traveling a lot for work and I actually love to wear a lot of color. That was the irony it was like the naked palette made me, but I was always known for wearing really brightly colored makeup mm. back in the day. And um, so I went to two women I worked with because I said, hey, I've got to like just have a quad of the perfect neutrals to take with me when I travel. Like I can't think about this. I need to just throw it in my bag and go mm. and mix it with my color. And so I said, just bring in, if you were stuck on a desert island, the four perfect shades for you. And then let's all compare what we brought and let's build the perfect palette. So we brought that, we all brought in our four shades and we laid them out. And the 12 of them basically made the naked palette with like, there were a couple of dupes. I think two people brought in like half baked. Yeah. And so we had to switch <laughs> out and we made another like kind of neutral matte shade. Mm -hmm. But basically that was the palette. It was wow. like everyone brought in their desert island shades. I so. love how collaborative it was. Okay, I want to rewind back to founding Urban Decay. So you grew up loving makeup, got sent home from school. Were you like, I'm going to start my own makeup brand, you're going to regret this one day? <laughs> no. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but mm. I, I mean, makeup was just these like big companies. It was Estee Lauder. It was L'Oreal. It was Cody. Like, yes. like I just, a girl from Fort Worth, Texas, I never in a million years imagined that I could be an entrepreneur in beauty. Mm. And mm -hmm. so it was really interesting through a friend. I met Sandy Lerner. Mm -hmm. Sandy is this incredible woman. She's like the original tech entrepreneur. She started Cisco Systems. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Shout out. Love you. <laughs> I love you. <ya. laughs> and, um, and I mean, she's so many things beyond that. Like mm -hmm. she is, she's put a spay and neuter clinic in every county in the country. Like she is, wow. she is a philanthropist mm -hmm. first and foremost, but she's also an amazing business person. She had this idea. It was really her idea. Like, why don't we start this like crazy makeup company and I, and I was thinking to myself like oh my gosh that sounds impossible and she's like I wrote tech what's beauty like mm. let's go so as the founder of Cisco Systems um, she was able to make some investment into it and help us get it off the ground and mm. and she was right there by my side like pushing me and like making me uncomfortable sometimes but at the same time being a mentor and I think that was one of the things we talked about before as a mentor isn't just someone who's gonna like be nice to you and say you can do and it cheer you on and cheer you on they're gonna do mm. all of those things and they're gonna give you advice but they're also like the best mentors are gonna lay down the line for you yeah. and push you and make you work hard and so mm. she was really all of those things for me and grateful every single day for that moment I met Sandy and sat in her crazy French chateau garden and met her cats <laughs> it was the best I love so. That so much when you were first developing products I've obviously known about your career and your journey for a while, and I've seen so many different interviews that you've done. And I saw that you were—you uh, first did nail polish, right? And then you were building your own press kits, yes. like arts and crafts style. Arts and crafts, going to the hardware store. <laughs> Tell me some of that hands-on, just things that people wouldn't think of when they see you of this amazing brand that you've built and then your new brand that you're just we need to get to that um that they wouldn't even know that you were like driving along the coast trying to find supplies to build out a end cap yeah so i think it's really important when you're an entrepreneur that you understand that it's like you hear these stories about people that get all this funding and they hire all this staff and they launch it and it's big, but really most entrepreneurs and the way I like to do things is like build it from the grassroots. And so mm -hmm. it was like, well, we don't have anyone to build press kits. So what are we going to do? I'm just going to have to do it. And so I went to the hardware store and I got really creative. I mean, Urban Decay was this like totally different vibe in the beauty industry at that time. There was nothing edgy at the time. Everything was soft and really sweet. And so I was like buying like caution tape and aluminum flashing mm -hmm. and solder gel and like making all these like crazy press kits and then when it came time to make displays I was going to like this metal shop and getting this guy he actually only had one arm and he had all these like cool mm -hmm. ways to like hold the metal and then like weld but he like built my displays for me from the ground up and mm -hmm. yeah so you just have to get like creative like it's not you can't just always hire someone to do something because you maybe don't have the funds to do it. So how are you going to get it done? Yeah. And, um, you know, I work with my husband now on Calirae, my new brand. And he always says, like, 
being an entrepreneur is about doing the impossible, right? Like mm -hmm. it's about like not having the budget to do it and figuring out a way to do it. And that's just what it's all about. And even now with Cali Ray, everyone thinks like, oh, well, you did urban. It must be like so easy to do Cali Ray. Like, no, we're just a, we're a tiny team, like grinding it out and doing the impossible. And I'm carrying boxes in and like mm -hmm. hiring the task rabbit guy to come in and like mm -hmm. supervising that. Like I'm not doing glamorous things, founder things like this all day long. I'm yeah. like in the trenches still. But that's the part I love. Like you have to love that stuff. One thing we always were, and I think it's important if you're an entrepreneur, is to be mission driven. Mm -hmm. And we were definitely mission driven on Urban. We were definitely mission driven on Cali Ray, my new brand. And so I think that that's really important is that you have a mission and you're driving towards that mission. And when you do that, great things happen that you can look back on. As you started to scale, what was the most difficult part for you for being one of the founders as something scales bigger than what you actually imagine. Yeah, so at the end, the biggest scale, I think the hardest thing for me was losing the hands-on, the ability to be hands-on with mm -hmm. product, to be so hands-on with, with the things that to me like really impacted the customer and really mattered. There were so many other bigger decisions that then slow down the product timeline, um, once you sell to a bigger strategic company, everyone wants to have their two cents. You have meetings to discuss the meetings. I, my role turned in from someone that created product and having a vision to someone that sat around a table and um, would comment on other people's work to give them, you know, like, oh, well, they're working on this palette now. Like, you don't have to do that. Just tell us what you think. And it's really hard to tell someone what you think when you're used to being like, no, I would just do it completely different than that, mm -hmm. you know? So it just becomes, it, it's just a harder transition when you're someone that's a creative person, you're kind of an artist and you want to have your hands in it. Mm -hmm. That evolution's tough. It's not impossible, but it's tough. Did you feel less fulfilled as you started to scale because you didn't get to be as creative as you used to be? I think there was definitely uh, creative fulfillment that was, yeah, that I was missing, which is why I wanted to start a new brand. Yeah. Yeah. From like your garage. <laughs> from my garage. Well, from the <laughs> dirty house that I bought next door. Yeah. Which is so cute. It's a 1950s, like everything's original, right? Yeah, everything's original in it. It's I a beach bungalow. Them. It was really, really dirty when I got it. So I did have to do a little like yeah. scraping, painting, you know, like. You should have called this guy. He, he would have come down uh, and helped you. <laughs> um, definitely next time, Brian. <laughs> um, well, it started with the you know, during the pandemic, before we really even started the business, yeah. um, we had bought the house and the first thing I built was a CrossFit gym in the garage. <laughs> That's so good. So then I took the house and fixed that up. Yeah. So. Does it bring you some nostalgia to starting Urban Decay out of your bungalow? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm, Aww, it's amazing you picked up on that, fun. but yeah, I wanted to just have that same moment where everyone felt like they were coming together mm. and just just working out of this like really intimate space that mm -hmm. felt very much like a family and like a home mm -hmm. and being super connected. And, and now it's like, okay, let's get around the round table and we all sit around the dining table and that's that. in the house. And you know, that's where we have our meetings. Mm -hmm. I can totally see your vision and understand your motivation to do that. I yeah. mean, we're literally hosting a podcast off right. of our sofa. That's right. <laughs> It works. I was like, where can I most comfortably do interviews where it just feels at home? And I'm like, oh, at home. At home. <laughs> Brian and I were having this conversation. Uh, what was probably the most exciting part of being an entrepreneur over the last... Mm -hmm. Wait, when did you start? I started... Urban started... We sold our first product in January of 1996. Okay. I thought I discovered it in Sephora. I always tell people I started when I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thinking back, what has been the most exciting part about being an entrepreneur that, that you share with your kids, that you constantly relive? now yeah there's so many like amazing crazy stories like stuff you can't believe kind of stories like and this happened and that happened yeah um 
But I think the most exciting part is just, um, was building that family and that team. It was more like a slow burn. It wasn't like any one singular moment. Mm. Um, you know, maybe it was when I got my CEW award, which is cosmetic executive women. That's yeah. a big moment in New York. They only award like four women a year and my kids were there when they were young mm -hmm. out in the audience and then at the end they were crying and That's like it was so really nice. like the sweetest things yeah. I think you know that was a really like heartfelt moment for me mm. I wouldn't say it was like the 2014 was like the pinnacle of my career and everything was downhill from there it was just like a really incredible moment I was yeah. sitting next to Leonard Lauder Wow. Right. And, um, my, I'm giving this speech and my kids are like, just having this really intense moment about like, that's my mom. And hmm. I felt so proud to be their mom and they were wow. proud of me. And it was like kind of a cool family moment. Yeah. So. You are a mom of two and I personally feel connected to that because as an entrepreneur, it's not easy because you always feel like you're choosing. Yes. And I struggle with when I'm working, I feel like I should be um, like literally mom, time to wrap this shit up. And then when I'm with the girls, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I have work to do. I need to email my community. I need to be in touch. I need to be working. I need to record a podcast. So it's that constant struggle. What was that like for you? So I managed it by deciding I was going to bring my kids into my work life. And I felt like it was a great opportunity for them to see like what business looks like, what powerful women look like, how they operate. So I would bring them into the office all the time. I would give them jobs, like go make copies for people, ask anyone if they need coffee. Do they need their dog dogs walked? We were a dog friendly office. Mm -hmm. um, so they weren't there all the time, but I did try to like integrate them. So they felt like really comfortable. They would be in videos with me Cute. when my uh, oldest was in second grade. I had him do a video applying false eyelashes to me to show how easy it was. Yes. So I tried to make them part of it all the time. And our dinner conversation, like we always have dinner as a family mm -hmm. and my husband was the CFO at Volcom. So he had great business stories and we were always talking about business, how to operate in business. And the kids would, I mean, obviously the, the conversation has evolved as they've gotten older, but it's always been these, like how you deal with people and manage people. And so we just integrated it into our lives and I just made sacrifices to not miss things. I remember I had to be in Houston for a conference with Alta mm -hmm. and I was there and I did the thing I had to do. And then I flew back to watch my son be in a talent show. And then I got on a plane and I flew right back to Houston and did the next thing I had to do. So you just make those sacrifices. And I have like a lot of little hacks about like, in plain humidifiers and things to like keep you healthy while you're traveling and yeah. um and then just trying to learn to say no to unnecessary travel and things like that so yeah that's so good are they are your sons entrepreneurial they are entrepreneurial i think they both um would be interested in having their own businesses especially my younger one who's now a senior in high school and about to go off to college wow. so is that the one that just had a birthday he just had a birthday turned 18. I cannot even handle. And then the pictures, I was going through your Instagram and I was like, oh, she has a young son. I was like, oh no, these That's are his birthday throwbacks. throwbacks. And then I get like emotional thinking. No, I have two young men <laughs> and I'm a tall person <laughs> and they tower over me. No way. Yeah. I have one that's six, five and one that's six, four. But they, do they listen to you even though you're looking up? Yeah, they you listen. Like, they're, you gotta come they're, home. Good. <laughs> they're good. They're good. Aww. They're good boys wow. or good young men. I should yeah. say I'm getting like emotional thinking about that. Oh, it happens fast. Get ready. Yeah. yeah don't take any moment for granted and take mm -hmm. all those family vacations. And oh my gosh, I can see you like feeling yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I can see you feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we, we didn't do a lot. Um, thankfully Colette is younger that like, um, with Bella, I don't really remember the first a couple of years and then it was like the all of a sudden the pandemic but like being pregnant with her like I was like it's was, it's was almost like when you are so in your entrepreneurial tunnel that you kind of think like when things aren't as crazy then I can focus and be present 
I, I just asked my mom, like, how was she present? She's like, I just was. I'm like, what do you mean you just were, <laughs> you know? And, and you so, just are too. You're going to yeah. see it looking back. Yeah. You know, looking back, I would take my kids to the gym where I worked out. Like, I'd do a class. Mm -hmm. And they would sit there, and now they have these this great, like, exercise ethic in their life because mm -hmm. they would go with me and they realize like oh that's what adults do together to have fun like to them like and so you are imprinting all of this stuff on her that's really yeah. great and Thanks. you're gonna look back and realize you did a lot of things really really right Thanks. and you'll remember more too yeah because you have like, a young 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 one too yeah. like you have an 18 yeah. month old like <laughs> I don't know how you think about anything right now. You're going to you're going to remember a lot more and you're going to remember all the great things you did. I just hope I'm being fun enough for them when cuz we also work from home. So I hope that when we are working that when she's seeing it, it's inspirational for her. She doesn't remember like, oh, when mommy was on our computer. Yeah. <laughs> I asked her the other day, I said, why do you think mommy works? And she's like, because you love it so much. I'm uh -huh. like, well, that's true. I do, I do love to create. And then I was like, why else? She's like, so you can buy me some dresses. <laughs> right. Good. See, she knows. <laughs> like, she wow. has an attitude of like, gratitude. Where did she even get that? Like, yeah. so cute. Okay. Wow. And what are your son's names? Cruz. So Crash is my oldest Crash. one mm -hmm. and Cruz. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their last name's Collier. So Crash Collier, Cruz Collier. Wow. So, yeah. That's so cute. And it does go by fast. It goes by so fast. <sighs> <I'm> like... <laughs> it goes by fast, but you know, it's the tiny moments. It doesn't have to be these big moments. I feel like it's those tiny moments mm -hmm. that really matter. It's that conversation at the dinner table you're going to remember mm -hmm. that. Um, I mean, my 18 year old said to me the other day, cause we weren't really into letting them have media when they were young yeah. and, um, cause they went to Waldorf school and he was like, I'm really grateful that you didn't let us have like video games and watch a lot of TV and have media. Like, I'm really grateful for that. And it's like, mm -hmm. where did that come from, from an 18 year old? But whatever you do in your family, like your kids are going to look back and they're going to like, they're going to love the things you did for them. Yeah. Wow. Whatever it is your thing is. Like, that was our thing. Whatever it is in whatever, you know, in your family or whatever family is, it's going to be, the kids are going to love it. Wow. They're going to have this, like, amazing experience. I don't know who it was recently. They were like, it's not the big moments, like you just said. It's the little ones each day that add up to what your home life was like for your kids. So when someone asks them later, what was it like growing up um, with your mom and your dad? They don't think about that one Disney trip. They think about how everyone would gather around the table, maybe grabbing breakfast and getting to school. And how was that? And that dinner time and the way that they're greeted when they come home, you know, just every day. So now I just got to focus It on is that. the everyday stuff. And it's the yeah. things you, how you play as a family. Like mm -hmm. I think my kids, like we're really big snowboarders. I think my kids are always going to think about like snowboarding with their family. I mean, we do a lots of other things together too, but that's yeah. the, really the main thing. Um, my mom just said that too. She was like, we played with you guys. Yeah, we played. We like ride our bikes together. We like go play volleyball on the beach together. We surf together. Like we try to like wow. play. I'm still waiting for Brian to teach me how to play volleyball. He was the captain of his team in high school. Oh, well, there's lots of good people around here in, in Manhattan. I can introduce you to. Okay. So let's talk about Cali Ray. Okay. I am obsessed with the branding, the packaging, the colors, the site the product. I have some of it here. What inspired you to create Cali Ray? So I have always been a super clean living person mm. and you know, I had both my kids in my house with a midwife. I have my EMFs turn off in my house every night. Wow. I like just jump in the ocean and cold plunge all the time. So I have all these like things I do mm -hmm. and I just, I wanted to be in the clean beauty business. And about 15 years ago, I took all the parabens out of Urban Decay products and no one at the time cared. No one cared about clean. No. No one knew what that was. We actually had to put no parabens on the box and people would be like, what does that even mean? Um, <laughs> I'm like, give me all the fake shimmer. Give yeah. me the half faked. <laughs> uh, well, there's actually, that's just mica as long yeah. as it's oh. mined without using children. Okay. We're good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, and you okay. can check on that. But the, but the, you know, the preservative systems were always not that good. There were, um, 
um, hormone disruptors in products. So we tried to pull all of that out before anyone ever cared. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a biodynamic garden for my employees that they wow. could pick things out of. I had yoga classes. Everyone got to bring their dog to work. Mm -hmm. So Was this you, you were like, we're going to take parabens out. Yes. We're going to have a garden. Yeah. All Aww. of these things. So, <laughs> uh, but no one really knew or cared. It wasn't really the Urban Decay brand ethos. This was just me behind the scenes infusing my yeah. personal jam into the brand. But it became the company culture. It became the company culture for the employees at, at the mothership is mm. what we called it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really, when it came time to do another brand, I really wanted to bring that like clean and wellness ethos into the products. And then I was actually surfing with my family off an island, deserted island, literally deserted island. And in the middle of nowhere, and I thought, I'm gonna take a break, I'm just gonna paddle to that deserted island and hang out for a bit while the boys finish their session. Mm -hmm. I paddle over, this deserted island is filled with plastic trash. And I realized, like, this whole, like, plastic in the ocean thing, it's a real thing. And as a beauty entrepreneur, I've contributed a lot of plastic waste into landfills, microplastics probably into the ocean. Like, I've probably done a lot of damage as an entrepreneur. So. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to start another beauty company, it needs to have a sustainability aspect and we need to be working towards the most sustainability we can. And the most sustainable thing is refills, right? Mm -hmm. But people don't buy them. So where can we start from there? So, you know, like our mascara tube is made from upcycled ocean plastic. We put everything into clear glass, not a coated frosted glass because it's easily recyclable. Like we try to use post-consumer recycled plastic, like all of those things or natural materials. Like I made a palette out of bamboo. Wow. that I put into my Lomi, composted and planted a plant in. So like we're always trying to innovate on the sustainability side in addition to being clean. So it's wellness, it's clean and it's sustainable is really our mission. So good. Yeah. I love that you, I, I thought you were going to the point where you wanted this deserted island and you had this moment this another epiphany. moment yeah you're like this is what I'm gonna create but you actually was like right in front of your face right in front of my face Wow how important is it as entrepreneurs to get out of their day-to-day -to, -day to come up with ideas where do you come up with your ideas I think you have to find again tiny moments because you can't as an entrepreneur always have the luxury of going well I'm gonna go like like Bill Gates goes and reads for a week and that is great I love the idea of that mm -hmm. but you don't always have that I'm like back kids <laughs> yeah you don't always have that so you have to find those that time like I'll do it when I a lot of times when I'm exercising walking my dog on the beach just really try to clear your head and find like moments when you can get out of the day-to-day -day, be super present and you know like I'm big on you know, meditating. Um, I just started doing this thing um, on my call map. It's like the EMDR audio. Mm -hmm. And I find like that really clears my head, like wow. really clears it to be open to accepting like kind of ideas. And it's all about like taking this little piece in, taking this little piece in and giving your time, mind time to marinate, to put the, mm -hmm. the two and two together. Yeah. Two and two together to make five, right? <laughs> I think that we think by opening, or maybe this is me, but I think sometimes I'll get inspired by scrolling, but I need to take time to not scroll to then be inspired. And a lot of us that feel uninspired open social media, a little escapism, and we want to scroll to, I don't even know, to escape our own minds, but it's really getting away from that and taking a moment, walking your dog on the beach without your phone maybe, and, or without scrolling at the same time. Like there's been so many times where I'm out for a walk and I'm actually on, so in, on social media. Yeah. It's hard to get away from the scroll, I get yeah. it. And you wanna feel like you know what's happening, what's trending, like mm -hmm. it's all about that. And that's the hardest thing is where's the balance? And it always comes down to balance, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, it's, but it's, it's a, not a static state, right? It's yeah. a dynamic state. So sometimes you might have to scroll a little more to see what's happening and then you need to back off of that mm -hmm. to not let that drive all of your creativity so it's not patterning and copying. It's like you need to step away so that you have time to like get creative on your own, but you can't be 
unaware of what's happening in the world. So yeah. like, where's the balance, right? Yeah. Same with your kids. We just talked about kids. Where's the balance between being that entrepreneur and working and being a mom mm -hmm. and it's a dynamic state. And there's going to be times like right now, my kids don't need that much of me. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's going to be times like <laughs> that they're going to need more. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what but, do you mean? Yeah. But there's, there were times in middle school when they needed my full and total attention. And I had some pretty amazing opportunities when my youngest was starting middle school. And I looked at that opportunity and I said, you know what? I cannot take this right now because this young man needs my full time and attention and needs me available to him because that is a rough time in life, right? When you're going through that. And so you just have to make those calls and it's all about the balance and then they get through it mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, he's good. I can spend a little more time like being a creative person again or being an entrepreneur again. My mom, that's one thing is that she was always able to drop everything for the tough stuff. Whether it was like, you know, middle school, high school, now. I mean, she would drop anything. There have been times where I'm like, I need you, and she sends me a screenshot of her flight. She's coming out. Yeah, it's wild. That's so great. We're always, you never stop being yeah. mom. And you never stop, and you know, he just did his college apps, and he needed me, mm -hmm. right? He needed more of me for a short time. He needed to bounce ideas off me. Aww. He needed to talk to me. He needed, yeah. he need, when he was tired, he needed to just put his head on my shoulder, and like, mm -hmm. he got through it. They're all in, we'll see what happens. <laughs> But, um, you know, they have moments. It's yeah. always an ebb and a flow. I have a few more questions. Well, I feel like we could spend the afternoon. Literally. On your couch. Literally, we could spend. I have so I, I don't even think we could get through everything. Maybe we need to do part two. <laughs> I'll come um, back. Or you can come to Newport. Yeah. Okay. We'll just record on we the boat. We put this on a Duffy boat. <laughs> yeah, we put it on a Duffy boat. Or we can record it in the, the Cali Ray house. Yes. One of your biggest life lessons that you can share or share the wisdom from that lesson. Yeah, I think one of my biggest life lessons, it actually came from Sandy. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you know, you've got to remember there's only so much Wendy bandwidth. And I think that that is such a great life lesson to realize, like, you can do a lot, but at some point you're going to tap out and you really can't go any further than that. And before you get there, you're going to have to figure out some solutions, whether it's like, okay, hiring an assistant or adding to your team or mm -hmm. taking a step back from something. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to say no to things. Like, I think that's tied into the biggest life lesson. Like I am a yes person. If you ask me to do something, I'll be like, yeah, I'll try to do that. Like I say yes to too many things. Same. And so I think the last couple, I've had two things in the last month that I have said no to. Wow. And I felt really strong and good about that. No. Wow. Because you said yes to yourself. I said yes to myself. Thanks for saying yes yeah. to be with me today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite mantra that you can share with everyone? One of my mantras is leave the party while you're still having fun. Because <laughs> then, you know, you leave. Everyone remembers you were great. No one remembers you were, like, if you had a drink, if it was too much. Um, you know, you just, mm -hmm. you're, you were a, a great guest if you leave while well, you're still mm -hmm. having fun. And my husband does use it against me because he likes to leave parties early. So, yeah. um, you know, he'll be like, Wendy, remember, let's leave while you're still having fun. Come on, let's get, get out, out of here. here. I'm like, no, I'm still having fun. Yeah. So, but it is, it applies to life as well. Yeah. We have always had a mantra of let's be the last to leave. Oh. So it's funny that, <laughs> <laughs> and we, Anytime we go anywhere, let's be the last to leave. We're, we're like the cleanup crew also. Too many drinks, it's fine. We'll still, we'll get in there. And now it's better that we have to have sitters because we have to rush out of there, you know, right when we know that the, we got to get home to right. free the sitter. And, you know, we wake up refreshed. We're like, wow, this is what it's like when you leave a party a little early. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> That could apply yeah. to a lot of things. It could apply to a lot of things. Yeah. And just getting the extra sleep is, yeah. you know, I never got enough sleep. That was part of the bandwidth problem, mm -hmm. right? I was always pushing, pushing, and just really focusing on getting that proper amount of sleep has been a game changer for me and my stress level. And Yeah, I don't sleep well. I want to go through some of your new okay. product. Look what Wendy brought, a beautiful 
Cali Ray bag that we can go through. Tell me about SoCal Super Bloom Lip and Cheek. So that is a lip and cheek product. It's clean, it's in a component that is made of post-consumer recycled plastic. And what's cool about that is it gives you a glowy cheek. You just need a little dot and it lasts all day. It looks kind of bright. Yep, I'll okay. tap it in for you. And then you just tap it right in. And hmm. oh my gosh, you're so peachy glowing. I love a good peach. Yeah, and then the cool thing is you can also put that. <laughs> oh no, I'm here to do your makeup. Um, you can also put that on your lip if you want mm. and unlike a lot of lip and cheek where you put it on your lip and it feels kind of um, dry because mm -hmm. it's a cheek product it actually feels hydrating on the lip it That's has a little nice. bit of a coconutty vibe mm. so if it's like you're on a vacay and it's really long lasting it's got a, what I call a soft stain so it's got a tiny bit of staining quality it's not gonna be like a hard stain where you're gonna get like super long wear out of it but on your cheeks it'll last all day I love it. And then it just gives a little bloom on your lips. And we called it the Super Bloom because it was really inspired by the Super Bloom we have here in California in the spring. All right. Come hell or come high water. Come hell or high water mascara. <laughs> so my original thought was the thing I would hear people complain about with mascara was mm -hmm. it was always smudging, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't want mascara that smudged. And well, I always get it above you get it above i probably right. have it right on my no you're good yeah, that's good but i can't curl my lashes because then i then it gets up top this brush actually gives you incredible volume without being messy and works for all kinds of eye shapes and then the components made with um upcycled ocean plastic i love it yeah wow that one is our newest baby it's in glass so it's a lip plumper this is very pretty in glass yeah. It feels very chic. And it's very chic and it goes on top of any lip color you love mm. or on top of bare lips. It's really beautiful. It'll turn your lips a tiny bit pinker. It has the teeniest little sting, so you can kind of feel it working. But big it, swell. Yeah, big swell. It gives you a little extra plump, especially if you use it for, you know, every day for a month. Mm. It's got maxi lip in it and it's got hyaluronic filling spheres. Oh. So I'll it just smooths out it all those little whole fine face. It, yeah. <laughs> You'll be sparkly and plump. <laughs> That's, you know, who's really going to love this? My daughter, Bella. She probably will. She's, she goes through my drawers. And I she's know, but just like, know, it's got, it's got a little tingle to it. Can you feel it? She's had tingle stuff before. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's kind of, she, uh, what did she say about it? Oh, she said um, it's spicy. Spicy. Is, yeah. It's, it's so not Bernie. It's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She calls toothpaste spicy. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. So blown. So, so, so blown. The cool thing about So Blown is mm -hmm. it's a blurring primer that gets rid of pores and fine lines, mm. but it's also hydrating. So usually blurring mm. primers feel like spackly and sticky. Yeah. This feels really like smooth, hydrating. It's infused with niacinamide and collagen peptides. It blurs everything out. Ooh. If you ever wanted to give... Just blurred my hand. Yeah, a gift to wow. a guy. This is a great gift for men because yes. they can just put it on and they instantly look like de-shined, smoothed out. They look really... The pores in my hand really yeah, disappear. I know, I know. <laughs> and it feels super lightweight. Makeup, it makes your makeup go on beautifully. I gotta put it on the other hand. And <laughs> if it's ever a day when you're not wearing makeup, it, we always say it's like clear makeup. Wow. Yeah. So wow. it's sold out on Sephora like seven times. Oh. So it went viral on TikTok, that one. I believe it. And it smells it like vacation. It smells amazing. Yeah. Wow, good job. Thank you. You're yeah. gonna love that one. <laughs> I Everyone love it. loves that one. Brian, don't steal this from me. Brian's There's one in here for Brian, too. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of pores. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So that is our surf-proof surf -proof setting spray. Mm. So I don't know if you know, but I invented setting spray. I always take credit for it. Um, well, I didn't actually invent it, but... The, you used to use hairspray, right? I used face? to use hairspray back in the day in Texas. <laughs> um, but I actually met a guy who had invented setting spray and it wasn't selling. And I'm like, you know what? Let's tweak the formula to my uh -huh. specifications. I'll buy it from you and I'll sell it. And sure enough, we created a whole new category at Sephora. Wow. So I went back to the original lab I worked with and I said, let's improve this setting spray. Let's make it clean mm -hmm. and let's add skincare ingredients. So we added seawater minerals, we added niacinamide, and we added transdermal magnesium for skin recovery. Mm. And then I put on the finest mister 
so and some blurring properties so you can con you can use it as a hydrator throughout the day mm -hmm. but it also sets your makeup go ahead and spray it because it won't feel like you're getting hit with the water gun like most setting sprays do you know that i've never used setting spray what ever and i love makeup well, I, I just today's day one. Let's okay, see what happened. First time setting spray ever. <laughs> You're seeing, seeing it right now. I'm scared. Okay. Mm. Ooh, it is. Mm. It's super fine, and it smells like going on vacation. Mm. Kind of just feels like, you know, the misters in Miami. Yeah, that's what it feels like. <laughs> but most setting sprays, if you spray them on, you'll get like. Yeah. You'll you'll have that reaction you were about to have. Maybe that's what I was afraid of. Yeah. Here so we go. That one's clean. Like I said, it's clean. Give it a little shake, spray it on. What? And then if you're feeling a little dried out during the day on like one of those Santa Ana wind days mm -hmm. when everything feels dry, just give yourself a spritz and you'll feel rehydrated. I use it on airplanes when you start mm -hmm. to feel dehydrated on the plane. Yeah. What's niacinamide? Niacinamide. niacinamide. It is a skincare <laughs> ingredient. It's kind of amazing for reducing pore size, reducing inflammation. Um, it works for people that have acne to help like soothe the skin, but it also works on drier skin. Mm. So it's this really kind of catch-all, amazing skincare ingredient. It's a yeah. B vitamin, basically. It's in one of my favorite lotions, but I didn't know what it did. That's what it does. I just knew it was good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for bringing all this. We have a lot of really interesting things um, and more new coming. That's so so it's always fun to make products I that bring how... that wellness aspect. So, you know, like this, I call it sprayable skincare, you mm -hmm. know? So it's, it's just one of those things I want to do is make them makeup good for you and mm -hmm. easy to use. Mm -hmm. I love the excitement and enthusiasm that you have. I know it's weird us. how I get excited about talking it's about so makeup. Good. I know. I but like, I do, I get excited every time. It's so important for you to feel fulfilled and whole in what you do for your work. It, it is. really is. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have one more question for okay. you. Okay. And then I have to let you go down to, back to, back Newport. to Newport. I'm gonna follow you down. Oh, you're gonna come down and we're gonna have, <laughs> we're gonna get on the Duffy <laughs> and open a bottle of wine and have a charcuterie plate. Okay, yeah. coming. How do you live beautifully? Well, I think it starts with putting your family first mm -hmm. and really focusing on them and um, putting yourself first too and making sure that you're healthy so that you can be there for them. So mm -hmm. every day I start my day with like some form of exercise. I love to be outside playing sports and get to the gym. I cold plunge. I drink green drinks. Like I do all of the stuff. Do you have a cold plunge at your house? I, I have an ocean in front of my house. Oh, I was like, I've never done a cold plunge, but. I have done a cold plunge. Um, we go to Alaska every year and that's a mm. real cold plunge in the yeah. frozen lake. That's the for real <laughs> cold plunge. And I have done cold plunges in ice baths before. Mm. Um, but you know, if you you don't live near an ocean and you don't have a cold plunge, a cold mm -hmm. shower works great. Mm -hmm. It's great. It helps stimulate, you know, like your hormone production. It just makes you feel really good. It's great for your skin. Mm -hmm. um, so I do do that. And then you can get out and you feel really invigorated afterwards. Yeah. I also read that when you do a cold plunge, you're challenging yourself to get through something that psychologically it tells you that whatever is coming to you during that day that you can get through it. And there's something I, in it I that is also that. part of the, it's also the brain power of, I got this. Yeah. And it's never, I think you have to tell yourself, it's never going to be pleasant hmm. when you first get in. <laughs> like you might start to get used to it, but it's mm -hmm. never going to be like, oh, this is going to be like a warm blanket. It's never going to be a warm blanket. It's going to be a cold plunge. Mm -hmm. And that we're just, we have those cold plunges throughout life. So mm -hmm. Um, but there's, I think for me, uh, fitness is my dr drug of choice. Mm -hmm. And so I always make sure I get that in every single day. I did it before I came down here, which is why I was 10 minutes late. Okay. So, you know, I love it. just got it in. Good. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It was really fun to talk to you. Where, We're going to keep talking more. Yes. Yeah. And where can everyone find you and Callie Ray? So Callie Ray, all our socials are at Callie Ray. Mm -hmm. Our website is CallieRayBeauty.com. And if you want to follow me, I'm just Wendy Zomner, but it's Wendy with an E, W-E-N-D-E. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Part two coming from okay. a Duffy boat. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was fun. Wow, that was so fun. And this is, I'm so impressed. I think you'll like it. I am, like. It's clean. It's good. Wow.
And this, Bella's gonna steal this, babe. Well, there's a couple of them in here, so yeah. I'm gonna use one for you and one I for I gotta her. use it before she takes it. Yeah. <laughs>